What's up and welcome to a new video. Now in my search of trying to figure out what to make a video on, I posted on Facebook of all places and saw this. Reading AITA Reddits. Now I've never heard of that before, but it stands for Am I the Asshole? So I typed in atheism and I went down this rabbit hole and found all these posts about atheists feeling like they should still tithe when they're around their family and pressure from their family to do so. It's, it's pretty wild. Personally, I know people who have had to tithe uh, in my life and they have been like massive in debt, health problems, taking out a second mortgage on their house, all of these things so that they can give 10% of their income to the church, also known as tithing. Even if you're poor, even if you're struggling with your health and you need money for medical expenses, the Lord needs your money more. A failure to give back to God what he says belongs to him is the sin of robbing God. Y'all don't want to rob God like that. Come on. A tithe is one tenth or 10% of your gross income. I say that you guys should give one tenth of your effort in your finger to like this video. I'm not asking for money, guys. I'm, I'm way more forgiving than the Lord. But a like would really help. And also leave a comment on things you want me to make videos on in the future because I, I turned to Facebook, for example, for ideas of how to make this one and I came up with this gold, but then I gave it all to God, all, all the gold. Didn't even keep my 90%. That's how good of a person I am, you guys. <laughs> I'm no stranger to getting pressured to give money to the church. I grew up Catholic. The little basket got passed around and it was always like, everyone's staring at you like, are you gonna put money in the basket or are you just gonna pass the basket to the next person and be like the scum of the earth? Outside of that, I have made videos before on like televangelists, pressuring people. There are some really interesting ones out there. I don't know if you guys have heard of Andrew Womack, but here's an example. I tell you, partnership in the gospel is the greatest thing you can do. When we get to heaven, I can guarantee you there's not a single one of you that's going to be saying, I wish you hadn't have encouraged me to give so much and that I'd have got my fifth flat screen TV <laughs> and that I would have had more jewels and fancier clothes and a nicer car. All that stuff will be gone. It's only what you invest in the kingdom that is going to benefit you for eternity. You're going to come up to me and hug my neck and kiss me and say, thank you, thank you, thank you for getting that money out of my pocket. Thank you, thank you, thank you for getting that money out of my pocket. <laughs> Like I said, people I know have been massively in debt, needed it for health expenses to like chalk up the income of certain people to, oh, they're just using it for jewels and another flat screen TV. Like, no, people have real bills, real problems, real expenses in life. They take care of their kids. They take care of their parents. 10% is a lot, especially when you're giving it to churches and preachers like this who are literally using it to buy themselves a plane. We'll get there. No, I'm not kidding. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This guy I'm particularly fond of because he convinced himself that he prayed away mildew. Let's hear it. And in the uh, closets, especially where it was dark and stuff like this, we just had mildew everywhere. And you know what I did? Instead of taking something and cleaning it off and repainting or something, I took Deuteronomy chapter 28 and read it. Mildew, you are a curse. Then I turned over to Galatians 3.13. I'm redeemed from you. And I spoke to mildew and cursed it. And did you know it went away without me having to clean it and do something? It was a curse. And I rebuked the curse. And I got free from that. Or should we say he read from Mill Deuteronomy? <laughs> I'm sorry, forgive me. <laughs> these televangelists are truly something. We're gonna play a lot of them, but I do wanna read some of these Am I the Asshole posts. I had no idea what this was. I can't, I'm like invested now. Am I the asshole for not wanting to give tithes in church? I mean, my immediate answer is no. And I guess the uh, community on Reddit also agreed. I grew up in a Christian household in which I no longer believe in. Okay, so you're not even religious. But I go to church when I'm home for college for the sake of my mom. As a rule, the Bible says give 10%. I don't think the Bible actually says that though. The Bible doesn't say that. This is like a church made up thing. I'm a poor college student trying to pay my rent and I've had, are you sure you're not buying your like fifth flat screen TV and jewels? Come on, be real. More jewels and fancier clothes, fifth flat screen TV. No, it's rent. So try to pay rent and I've had to fight over and over with my mom over this BS or whenever the giving basket comes around to me, I immediately pass it off. Ooh, the tea that must stir up. Trust me, I've done it. People look at you, they gossip like, oh, did you see she did? I'm tired of getting shit over this, but am I the asshole? I got bills, damn it. Obviously, no, you are not the asshole. I mean, how presumptuous though, to like pass a plate around to people. <laughs> that seems like a dick move to me. I mean, like have, have something people can donate to like sitting somewhere. They, they can walk up to it if they want to, but to literally like pass it around and look at every single person like, are you gonna? Seems messed up. I never liked it, that's for sure. Let's hear from another televangelist real quick about tithing, just so we have a better understanding of what it really gets you. When you release your tithe, you're giving it to Jesus. When you give your offering, you're giving it to God. 
And when you do, you're putting it up in a heavenly bank account so that when you have a need on the earth, you can make a withdrawal and your need will be met. Amen, let's stand to our feet. Oh guys, you're not even really giving it away. It's just your heavenly bank account. You're investing. You can make withdrawals. Someone commented a Corinthians Bible quote saying, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Even the Bible says you are not the asshole. There you go. Here's another one, AITA for refusing to give the church money. I am a female 16, just got my first part-time job. Just as you'd expect, I'm working minimum wage, have to deal with angry customers, I'm having to figure a lot of stuff out for myself. I'm gonna skip through this. She's got a conservative family, Bible thumpers and preachers, and the church is a huge part of their life, but she's beginning to question her faith because of the people that she works with. She's finally getting exposed to the outside world. Just started getting paychecks and wants to use it for things like teenage stuff, getting ice cream and going to movies, getting my own gas and saving for college. And then she says, granted with Corona, it's limited, but it's more freedom nonetheless. So this was posted during COVID. Well. I would love to surprise you with something. There is a cure for COVID. Oh yeah, there's a cure with a silver lining. It's silver. It's just the cure is silver. This influenza that is now circling the globe, you're saying that silver solution would be effective. Well, let's say it hasn't been tested on this strain of the coronavirus, but it's been tested on other strains yeah. of the coronavirus and has been uh, able to eliminate it within 12 hours. Yeah. Totally yeah. eliminate it, kills it, and deactivates it. Yeah. Deactivates it, guys. It's just, psh, the switch is flipped off. Can't believe this didn't like take off during COVID. Like if only we all knew. <laughs> anyway, this is during COVID times, so she still wants to do fun things, wants to save for college, but her mom sat her down for a talk. Her family is one that practices tithing. And even though she's not really religious anymore, she's seen the church not really do much with that money to make real changes in the community. So she offered, get this, she offers to donate 10% to other local organizations food pantries, parks, animal shelters, women's clinics. I'm sure they love that. So she wants to actually make a difference with her money. She's even okay with giving money, but God doesn't want you to give it to charity. He wants you to give it to the church. Nope, wrong choice. My mom went off on me saying, God gave you that money. You have to give it back to him. Pretty sure she earned that money. I said I felt like giving the money to places where I knew it would be put to good use, but would be better than simply paying our pastor. So she gets even more angry, asks why. She admits she's not very religious anymore. And now she's getting the silent treatment and, and treated pretty poorly overall. So I, I feel bad for those types of situations. Hopefully by now that whole thing has smoothed over and I, parents in general, I hope that this just stops happening to people. I hear about it all the time and it's super depressing. But uh, in short, no, you are not the asshole for not wanting to give your hard earned money as a 16 year old to the church. Yes, save that money for college. Again, not flat screen TVs and jewels, but college. And yeah, fun things here and there. You gotta live your life within reason if you can afford it. And guess what? Sometimes you can afford it if you're not giving away 10%. I, I, you know what I mean? But while we're talking about income and money and, and what to spend it on, I do think briefly talking about the economy is important. I mean, we talk about the economy, assuming everyone has the same like base knowledge of how it works, but that's just not true. Do we all collectively have a good understanding? Do you? For example, have you heard of the misery index? And no, I'm not talking about how miserable you feel when you listen to these televangelists. I mean, there's a thing called the misery index. It's an index that was created to measure the economic distress felt by everyday people due to the risk of or actual joblessness combined with an increasing cost of living. It's basically like a snapshot of the US economy. The misery index equals the inflation rate plus the unemployment rate. The lower the index, the lower the misery felt by the average citizens. So what does that mean? Why am I telling you about it? Because this video is gonna make you miserable. No, I'm just kidding. The misery index at the end of 2023 was 6.8%. That's the lowest point since the pandemic hit in March, 2020. If only more people were taking colloidal silver. And that 6.8 is well below the 8.3 average for the century to date. Unemployment and inflation are the two great causes of real, rather than just merely vibes-based, overall economic health. So overall, when people talk about the economy, they mean like stock market, and corporate profits, but the misery index measures how regular people feel. So it matters when it improves. COVID-19 was like a double whammy. Huge spike in unemployment and then a big rise in inflation. Well, that seems to be over now, with both indicators reverting to a low level, which is indicative of a healthy economy. For me personally, that feels like I can go do little things for myself. Like this girl mentions going and getting ice cream and doing fun things. Like, yeah, I feel that girl. And that also sort of does tie nicely into today's sponsor, Deal Dash. If you're like me, and even when the economy is good, you still wanna get a good bargain and a bit of bidding fun. Fun, check out Deal Dash. So this is honestly something that people sort of either love or hate. I've seen mixed reviews. It's interesting because you have to pay to make bids and that doesn't necessarily appeal
appeal to everyone, but it doesn't bother most people because I see a lot of people already bidding on Deal Dash. But if you don't know what it is, I'm gonna tell you about it. Deal Dash is basically an auction website. I've been seeing their commercials that are sort of annoying on TV for like 15 years. And because of that, I know they have thousands of auctions every single day with brand new items. I mean, people have won auctions like an iPad for $13.24 or an Xbox for just 45 bucks. So what's the catch? Well, like I said, you have to pay up front to bid. So for instance, here, after you sign up, they ask you to buy 400 bids for 30 bucks, which means you can bid 400 times in any of their auctions. Now, every auction starts at $0 with no minimum reserve price. And every time you bid, you can at most raise the price by a penny. After you bid, the auction timer counts down by 10 seconds. If no one else bids in that amount of time, you win. So this is me having fun making a bid and ah, uh, I lost, someone outbid me, that's fine. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna try again until I get it. Perseverance wins. They have all sorts of crazy things like this brand new Jeep that someone won for $1,875 and this Nintendo Switch for just $22. So let's say you spend your 200 bids, which would cost you roughly about 20 bucks. You spend that bidding and you don't win the auction. You can just use the buy it now feature and buy the item at their fixed buy it now price. And when you do that, you get all the bids right back in your account. Is this for everyone? Honestly, no. Some of the auctions can take hours or even days to complete. So you need to invest time into bidding, but it could pay off. Also, they don't ship internationally yet, so if you're not in the US or Canada, it won't work. Sorry. But if you like bidding on auctions and you have some time on your hands, you could really make some like steals. So make sure you check out dealdash.com, use my promo code Jacqueline Glenn, and that'll give you a hundred extra free bids on your first bid pack purchase. Also, if you try this out and you buy your first bid pack and you don't like it for any reason, Deal Dash will refund you. Just contact them and you'll get your money back, no questions asked. So do me a favor and check out dealdash.com, use my code Jacqueline Glenn, supporting them supports me. I'm so thankful that they sponsored this video, also because I already like using them, that's like super cool. And just think, if you're tithing and you say that 10%, the things you could buy for yourself. <laughs> all the flat screen TVs and jewels. Or who knows, you know, you could pay your mortgage. There's a healthy balance to living a little and like, you know, saving money so that you can live at all. Saving is good and I'm not talking about your heavenly bank account. You're putting it up in a heavenly bank account. Oh, and also don't go spending a thousand dollars when televangelists say things like this to you, please. I'm gonna reiterate that I want you, when you order this thousand dollar to do it in faith, to sow that thousand dollars yes. seed Amen. in faith, That's believing true. that this is part of your seed into the kingdom of God. You're doing something for the kingdom yes. of God. And God is going touching to... Touching the world. Just yes. They're touching the world. Literally. It's true. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're sending out to the, the... What do you call the blanket again? Miracles happen. Miracles happen blanket. Just a big that blanket right there. Prayer clock. You're there it is. That is just... A, sleep under it or do whatever you want to do with it. Hang it on the wall. <laughs> That'd be a great wall hanging. I am not going to hang that on my wall. I'm also not going to give him a thousand dollars. Even though he tries to convince people, I shit you not, and I will prove it with the next clip, that if you, <laughs> if you put your bills into this blanket and wrap your bills up like you owe the hospital money for a procedure, right? You know, I had a baby recently. They sent me a pretty hefty bill for that. I could have just gotten this blanket and wrapped the bill in this blanket and God would have paid it for me. Imagine that. Lay it, so they get with it Nana. Lay it over your bills. Oh, yeah. that's Because healing of your Amen. finances. And Put your wallet in there, your credit cards, all the bills, yeah. you know, house, the mortgage. Put it on there. We're having Praise houses God. paid off this week, wow. this, this last month and this month. And I'm like, hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. The look on her face, by the way, that like smug little look, like she knows she's got to know she's full of shit. She's got to know. How do you sleep at night? How do any of these people, like, it makes me so angry. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. And speaking of the audacity of these people, these preachers and televangelists, and I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, literally take the money from these people who can't really afford it and then go buy themselves a private jet and then have the audacity again to shame people if they wanna buy a TV. What if you do wanna buy a fifth flat screen TV? Is that really more ridiculous than this man buying himself a whole ass plane? I really believe that if Jesus was physically on the earth today, he wouldn't be riding a donkey. Think about that for a minute. He'd be in an airplane preaching the gospel all over the world. Televangelist Jesse Duplantis is hoping to take the word of Jesus to new heights with help from a $54 million private jet. $54 million. 
But Jesus would have done it. He would have done it. I've owned three different jets in my life and I and used them and just burning them up for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm burning them up for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't give me money, you'll be burning up in hell. Kenneth Copeland is another one that I've like made fun of before. And he also has a plane and this is how he justifies it. <laughs> it's really bad. That's why we're on that airplane. We can talk to oh. God. You gotta be up in the plane. You can just really talk to God. Why can't you do that commercially, hmm? Oh, he's going to tell me. You can't manage that today. Right. The, this dope-filled world. Right. And get in, an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right. That's exactly the And it, it's deadly. And, and it works on your heart. It really does. Oh, because other people on there might be sinners, and then you're in this long metal tube with demons. Yeah, that makes sense. 54 million. They need it. They need it. That the reason why Jesus hadn't come is because people are not giving the way God told them to give. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Wow. I mean, when you understand it, you can speed up the time. If you give money to this man, Jesus will come sooner. Good to know. You see what I'm saying? Wow. Well, apparently somebody called in and had an issue with him, and this is how he very professionally handled the situation. I heard you was a millionaire. I said, that's not right. That's not true. He said, yes, it is. I said, no, it's not. Multi. Now add that to it, you'll be all right. <laughs> oh, he couldn't handle that. He liked to have had a fit. And I said, you mess with me, I'll buy this station and I'll fire you. Yeah. Oh, he didn't like that, then he did uh, You know, that was a little fleshy, but it felt good. <laughs> <laughs> it just did. You know what I mean? It just did. It felt good. Like these people have no shame. No shame. They are stealing money from people and I asked, how do you sleep at night? Apparently perfectly fine. He does not care. And not only do they not feel bad, they feel like they are the ones who are being persecuted because people have a problem with their spending habits. All you have to do, Jeremy, to get to incur a lot more persecution is buy two airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward. So very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Poor man. He just can't buy his airplanes in peace. He just can't take the money of the people in his congregation that are probably poor and really need it. He can't. These old people who are giving money probably to these televangelists, they get like sucked in, sort of like the grandpa in South Park buying shitty jewelry. Like they just get sucked in and give money to these people. You want to get in on these deals, call now. These earrings normally go for six million dollars. We're going to sell these today for... Three hundred twenty dollars. Oh, my name is Vivian. Vivian, you just got a heck of a deal. What's your last name, sweetheart? Oh, I, I can't remember. You can't remember. Well, can you remember your credit card number? Three seven one. Five. Hold on, Vivian. We'll get you on with a rep. Take down that number. Thousand dollar. This is part of your seed into the kingdom of God. Sleep under it. Or do whatever you want to do with it. Hang it on the wall. You want to get in on these deals, call now. And after all that, these guys do sleep perfectly fine at night because they are, after all, the victim. So let's get more into these Am I the Asshole threads. Let's talk about, you know, people who don't want to give to the church, who don't want to give to people like this. Like, it makes a whole hell of a lot of sense to me but apparently not to everyone. Am I the Asshole? Refusing to donate to my old friend for his mission trip at church. Everyone thinks not the asshole. And I agree, let's see here. One of my old friends from college reached out to me after about six months or so without talking. Now this is already sketch. I've had people do this to me, it's very frustrating. It's like, you don't talk to these people and then they need something and then they hit you up. Like, girl, it's been so long, all right, um, can you donate to this or can you promote this? Nothing bad, just life, I guess. We both graduated and went our separate ways in life. Since then, he got involved with mission trips at church and in the past, I was donating to his trips. My financial situation since then has worsened a bit, but could still probably donate if I wanted to. The guilt people feel. Part of me just feels like now he just reaches out periodically, but can sense his motives are all about getting funding for his trips. In summary, am I the asshole for cutting it off? and not donating to his church. Uh, I guess he's helping kids in Africa or something um, on his mission trips. Like, listen, I, I think if you wanted to help kids in other countries or, or whatever it is, you can donate directly to those causes. Donating to somebody's mission trip, you're literally paying for them to go evangelize. That, I am obviously I'm an atheist. I don't think that's important to do. People need food, people need clean water, people need education, people don't need 
to pay for your trips to go there and get on a little plane. On that airplane, we can talk to oh. God. So you can tell people about Jesus and then post pictures about how awesome you are. I know people, I, can you tell? I know people that do stuff like this and it infuriates me. The amount of money that is spent on their travel and all the things they need to do these trips is just stupid. Like people need food. The comments below this sort of all agree. Like this person said, if you want to give to charity, donate to one that's already set up, not funding someone's travel to go preach religion to people poor enough to have to put up with some preachy Westerner just to receive aid. Damn. Regardless of whether or not someone's religious, I don't care. You do whatever makes you happy as long as it doesn't come to the detriment of others, as long as it's not harming other people. And unfortunately, especially whenever it comes to tithing and these televangelists, I do think they're taking advantage of people, convincing people to buy thousand dollar, you know, worth of products and blankets and stupid shit that they think they can actually convince people and probably successfully do that this blanket's magical and can like pay your mortgage. That's really sad to me. We're having Great. houses paid off this week, wow. this, this last month and this month. And I'm like, hallelujah. Oh, and the same guy with the thousand dollar blanket story here, he, he gets worse. Can you believe it? <laughs> it gets worse. So I, I want you to help today. Those that can give a thousand dollars. So this is, is showing tornado damage in Kentucky and he's asking for a thousand dollars guys. Not for a blanket this time but also not for the tornado and the victims involved. Give a thousand dollars to help us stay on the air. To help us stay on the air. And why is he getting kicked off the air? Well, turns out the mineral, the colloidal silver bullshit got him in a lot of trouble. Silver solution would be effective. It hasn't been tested. Yep, so now he needs more money to stay on the air, not to help the victims involved, but to stay on the air. So he can keep stealing from people most likely old people who don't know what they're giving their money to. Like, I hate all of this. All of this pisses me off so much. And let's just play a little game here. Let's just, let's just play the game. Let's say there were a God. Let's argue this just for a second. Christians believe that all you need to get into heaven is just love and Jesus. You need Jesus, you have the Jesus ticket, you get into heaven. That's actually the only criteria for most Christians. So these pastors, may truly believe in God. Some of them I think might just totally be full of shit, but some of them probably as a baseline at least do believe in Jesus. So they've got their ticket, they've got their ticket in. And even with that ticket, these guys are the literal worst. They are the worst. They are taking advantage of so many people. It's just hard for me to think that these Christians who believe Jesus is the only way, they would look at these men and think that they get into heaven over, let's say there's an atheist who's a good person, right? I'm not talking about me. Let's just say there's like the best atheist literally ever. No, like just a a anybody, right? Anybody who's just not religious, but a good person. That person can't get into heaven. Actually, some Christians believe that person will burn in the fiery pits of hell for all eternity because they didn't believe in Jesus. But these guys get in. It's just hard for me to fathom that if there were really a God, that would be the case, that they would allow that to happen. In no logical or just realm would a God, maybe all knowing, but definitely not all loving, would a God ever behave like that? This is a nonsensical conversation regardless, but still sort of interesting because this is what some people really believe, which is wild. In summary, Anybody who is not giving their money to the church, you are not an asshole. I don't think tithing is appropriate. If you wanna give your money somewhere, donate it to a charity that you know where it's going. And sure, there are some churches that are small, homegrown, they might need donations to keep the lights on. Sure, I'm not trying to say it's always bad to support like a community center if that's what some churches sort of are to people, I get it but like it just gets way too extreme way too quickly in a lot of cases. Like even in the small church that I grew up in, like I don't think that money was going where it should have been going. And it certainly is certainly not going where it should be going when a televangelist tells people they need it to put in their heavenly bank account. Please don't do that guys. Don't buy the thousand dollar blanket. It will not pay your bills. Okay. With that, I'm gonna go. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up, share it everywhere, and I I will see you in the next one. Leave comments and let me know what type of videos you'd like to see me do in the future. Should I do more Am I the Asshole videos? I kinda had fun with it. All right, let me know and I'll see you later. Bye.